With the series level at one all, I needn't tell you how important victory is, not only to us, but to the morale of people back home. I have inspected the wicket, and I'm pleased to say that it is much truer than in Melbourne. Needless to say, I expect nothing less from our bowlers than their best. Aye, well, it weren't only the bowling that were weak in Melbourne. That's quite correct, Harold. There will also be a few changes to the batting lineup. Eddie Painter will be replacing Patodi, and I am well aware that I have not scored enough runs. Indeed, should you all believe that my performance doesn't warrant selection, I am perfectly happy to stand down. I don't want anyone playing who's going to let the side down. That includes myself. Yes, well, I'm sure I speak for the team when I say that your value as a tactician far outweighs your temporary loss of batting form. I, for one, want you in charge on that field today. Aye. 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 Gabby? I think you should play, Douglas. If I may say so, Skipper, there is just one complaint. You'll never win the bloody toss. <laughs> I really would like the chance to bat first for a change. <laughs> I'll do my best. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. Jardine. It's me lucky charm. Got me into team. Might help you win toss. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Bloody marvellous! Congratulations. Nice <laughs> to rise all about, Eddie. Tails. I think we should bet. Good morning and welcome to the Adelaide Oval, where the news is that England has won the toss and Jardine has elected to bat. This is the third test and the series stands at one match all. The ground is in splendid condition after yesterday's rain and may have livened the pitch up a bit on this beautiful hot day. A huge crowd is already in hand, anticipating some very interesting cricket. There are changes to both sides. For Australia, Ponsford returns in place of O'Brien and for England, Verity replaces Bowes and the now up of Patowdy has been omitted, allowing Eddie Painter to make his debut. And it's Jardine and his Harlequin cap to take the first ball here from Wall. He comes up and bowls, and this is pushed into the covers. They think of one, but Grabman out there like a panther, a beautiful piece of fielding. His return comes back right over the stumps to Oldfield, and no run there, and great applause from the pro Australian crowd. It's a very slow and patient start by England, with runs just coming at a trickle here at the Adelaide Oval, and singles have been the story of the morning. The new open at Jardine has hardly played a stroke. Ready now for the next ball to come in from Wall. And this one, he has a swing, he's got a stick, now it's gone through the keeper, there's no chance there. Yeah, you're a lucky bastard. No, just a bastard. <laughs> I've come to demand an apology. Oh, what for? I don't appreciate being called a bastard. Fair enough. Which one of you bastards called this bastard a bastard? <laughs> hey, silly bastard. And so England, after a hopeless start when they lost four for 30, have fought back to a respectable first inning score of 341. That was reached mainly due to two excellent partnerships between Maynard and Wyatt, and secondly between Painter and Verity. The Andes is now very strongly on the Australians to weather these early ones. All right, you blokes. All right, we're all square. 341, it's well within range on this ground. Jardine knows it. So he and his boys will be coming down hard, make no mistake. So let's get our heads down and show them that we can handle anything they have to offer. There's a lot at stake here. I want to win this match as much as you blokes. But what's more important is to show the Poms that we know how the game is played. And of course, it remains to be seen if and when Jardine will use the controversial body line tactics. That expression is an abomination! I am using legitimate leg theory. 
My dear boy, you are guilty of sophistry. Abominable as that expression must be, it is an accurate description of your tactics. Excuse me, Douglas, but the umpires have taken the field. We must each follow the dictates of our own conscience. It's an old trick of Tiger Smith's. Protects her hands. Good heavens, man, a couple of hours out there, you stink to high heaven. Anyway, hurry up. Alan will share the opening attack with Lowood and he'll bowl here to Fingleton. What I would describe as a fairly orthodox field. If up comes Alan. Fingleton plays, and there's a dive across there by arms. I think it's a catch. Yes, he's out, and Fingleton is out for a duck. <laughs> well bowled, Javi. What on earth is that smell? It's revolting. Hey, Jardine! Leave our bloody flies alone! <laughs> Fortunate start for Australia and Bradman to come in in only the second over with the ball still brand new. A lot will rest on the shoulders of Australia's number one batsman and although this record crowd of more than 50,000 are keen to see Bradman, I'm certain they wouldn't have minded waiting until there were a few more runs on the board or at least many more overs had been bowled. Alan starting to move in here. What will Bradman's approach be? Well, he plays a shot at the first one. He's got it wide of the gully. It's gone down to third man, and Bradman gets a single. He's off the mark, and that's the end of the over. And Bradman will keep the strike as Larwood will bowl the next over, and there's going to be a mid wicket conference between the two batsmen. Larwood's oh, getting a bit of bounce from this end, so you watch it. Thanks very much, George. Now the battle between Larwood and Bradman continues once again. Who's, who's it going to be today? And this one is pitched well up, it's turned yes. by Bradman. There's no leg side deal here at the moment. And Bradman goes through for a single. He scored two runs in two balls. That's a good start for Australia's champion batsman. Now the field ready again, still an orthodox one. No indication of the body line field at all as yet. And it's Woodfall, this dogged Australian opener and captain, to face the next ball from the champion fast bowler Larwood. Christians nil. Oh, well, no. There must be concern in the Australian camp for Woodfall's condition, but he's going to bat on. And he looks to me to be as white as a sheep. And there's Jardine clapping his hands. And he's called for the body line field to move in position for the first time this morning. And just listen to that crowd reaction. I don't believe it. Getting in the boot while a man's down. Look at him. A pack of hungry sharks. Make you feel proud to be an Englishman? <laughs> Don't you think you're overdoing? And here's the first ball from Larwood with the body line field. That row of golf is all waiting for a catch. It's short and it's popped up He's and the ball. bat's been knocked right out of Woodfall's hand. It's on the pitch as they go through for a single. The ball just getting over the top of the short legs. But for Australia's point of view, Woodfall is away from the strike. Stay down here, Woody. 
I'll take it. Bradman is eight, Australia one wicket down for 18. The run's taking about 45 minutes to get. So it's a slow rate of progress by the Australian team. Only two bowlers used so far. They're Rawood and Allen. It's still Rawood coming in to bowl now to Bradman. It's short, he just pays an evasive little bit of shot the ball from the other leg slip to Allen. I believe that Bradman's out. Court, yes, he's out. Mrs. Bradman, I, I can't expect you to believe this, but I should have been quite pleased to see your husband score a century today. I'd sooner field elsewhere. It's all the same to you. Something has to be done about this. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right, Jess. It's the batsman out there we've got to worry about. In this report from the Adelaide Hall, Australia has made a bad start once again. Dingleton and Duck and Bradman out for only eight. Now McCabe and Woodfull are batting together against the fiery fast bowling of Larwood with Allen in support. Larwood has used the body line field this morning and Woodfull was struck a nasty blow earlier on, but he's still out there battling for survival with the score just reaching 30 after more than an hour's play. Now McCabe has the strike. It's been an uncharacteristic inning so far with hardly an attacking stroke. This time he just fends it away. It's gone straight to Jardine in the leg trap. And another victim for the body line field. McCabe is out for eight. Australia, three wickets down. And the old firm of Woodfull and Ponsford back together for Australia. And here's a bowling change. Left arm man Vos is coming on in place of Larwood. But there's no change to the field here. It's still body line. So Vos moving into bowl for Ponsford. And he offers no stroke, not playing a shot on the other side. Body just got hit. comes up again, and again, Ponsford not making the shot. He's turning his back on. He's not quick enough to get out of the way. Bastards. We seem to be watching two different games of cricket here. We have Vos with body line from one end, and Allen with an orthodox field from the other. Now Woodfull has the strike. This one is well up, and it's bowling. Clean bowl. Woodfull's out. See you in church. Dear fellow, I most sincerely regret no, this. I don't wish to discuss it, Plum. Look, there are two teams out there. One of them is trying to play cricket. Yes, well, he's only the first batsman hit by a ball. Well, oh, no, exactly. I mean, you know, WPA always used to say that injuries are part of the basketball game. Well, I've had my share of injuries, as you well know, including a brain injury. Yeah, and that was the reason I tried to preserve some semblance of public. Woodfull protests against shock tactics. What do you mean by going to the Australian dressing rooms in that way? You have no right to go there without first consulting me. 
You have left me in a terrible situation. Yes, what well, Douglas's plan was just saying. It's his job to keep things running smoothly. Please, Bob. Do you call this smooth running? You have allowed Woodfall the opportunity to publicly accuse me of not playing by the rules. You have played right into the hands of those bloody Australian journalists. Douglas, I hardly think this is the time, nor the place. It is one the thing to have the Australian press publish lies about me. It is another thing altogether to have the Australian captain accuse me of not behaving in a sportsmanlike manner. In the heat of the moment, Douglas, I'm sure that Bill didn't mean to imply that you were behaving in an unsportsmanlike manner. Then let him course. say so publicly. You speak to him. I expect to read an apology from Woodfall in the papers tomorrow morning. Without fail. What will you do? Well, I shall have to do something. Otherwise, the test series won't resume tomorrow. I can't believe that Bill's apologised. That's playing right into Jardine's hands. That's just what the bastards want. I've already proved they're bowling at the batsman. You all saw that. This is adding insult to injury, apologising to Warner. I was in here when Warner came in, Vic. You weren't. Bill didn't do any apologising. Well, Bertie, it must have been later. The point is, are we going to start doing something about it? Such as? Fighting back. We could give them a bit of their own medicine. What with? Tim's the only fast bowler we've got. If Clary and Tiger and me start bowling short and fast, it'll be a bloody joke. They'll knock us all over the paddock. I'm not having a go at you blokes. You've done a great job. What I'm saying is we've got to get some more fast bowlers. We've got to get Bill to talk to the board and the selectors. What about Vic? About the way Jardine's playing the game. Well, I don't like it any more than you blokes. Then what did you apologise for? Apologise? It's all over the front page. This isn't true. The last time I saw Warner was on Saturday in here. And I certainly didn't apologise. Right. Well, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. What? Nothing? I'm not going to dignify a lie. But, Bill, you've got to refute it. And we have to start fighting fire with fire. You saw what happened on Saturday. I kept moving away from the wickets. The balls kept coming at me. Bill, they're bowling at our bodies without question. We have to begin bowling at them. We're here to play cricket. And that is precisely what we're going to do. You call that cricket? Are you all right? Of course he's not all right. I'm fine, Woody. Are you willing to stick with it? Look, it's the choice between getting out and getting hit. I'm prepared to wear it. Thanks, mate. Look, I don't care for Jardine's tactics either. But I don't believe we should stoop to his level. Didn't you read your father's Bible, Bill? An eye for an eye. It also says he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. And we're in big trouble. Come on, you blokes. Bert, what do you say? I've been playing cricket for quite a while now. I've seen a lot of men get hit, but it was never like this. But this is deliberate, as Vic says, but that's where I draw the line. When we start going out there to hurt one another, that's when I call it a day. I love the game of cricket. I've always loved it ever since I was a kid. When I used to watch Clary and Dainty and Bertie out there on the turf at the SCG, all I ever wanted to do was to play cricket for Australia and wear this baggy green cap. Now that I've been given that honour, I realise what a great responsibility it carries. Not to the board or the selectors, but to those people out there, to my teammates, and most of all to this cap. 
See, we've all got a lot to live up to. My parents and my wife are very proud of me. And I just couldn't do anything that they would consider wrong. Anything that would go against what this cap stands for. I'm with you, Bill. Welcome to the third day of the third test here at the Adelaide Oval for the continuation of Australia's first innings. Ponsford and Oldfield will continue their partnership from Saturday where they defied the body line field and the body line bowling for a long time and they're receiving enthusiastic applause from a very big crowd here despite the fact it's a Monday. This is filthy with coppers. Got mounted troopers out beyond the grandstand. Australia to bat on in the first innings at five wickets down for 131. Ponsford recalled to the Australian team that this match must have been hit a dozen times in his courageous innings of 74 not out. The keeper Oldfield has given valuable support. He's on 41. Ponsford has the strike and we're going to take up where we left off on Saturday. It's body line straight away. Ponsford the batsman, Larwood the bowler. Sorry, Bertie, there's nothing I can do to stop Australia. The batsmen are getting hit so often that the crowd's in a very nasty mood. It's Oldfield now to face up to Larwood.
Birdie's got a fractured skull. The doctor said a fraction either way and he was dead. What about his missus? She heard it on the wireless. She's on her way from Sydney now. He's going to be all right. He was a bloody tail ender. The boy's still here. We better have a talk. Mr. Ponsford. Give her the birdie as a memento. Thanks, mate. I've been thinking about the future. I don't know about you blokes, but it can't go on like this. Bloody hell. Whatever it was that happened out there today, I'm sure of one thing, it wasn't cricket. Funny thing, my dad always wanted me to play cricket because he thought it was a game for gentlemen. Must be breaking his heart. I'm no squid, mate. I can take a few knocks. But there's a time when courage becomes stupidity. Yes, I know. What are you saying then, Woody? I'm saying it's my responsibility what's happened to you blokes. I'm the captain. It's the captain's job to ensure the welfare of his team. I've led you into this. There's nothing anyone could have done. Well, I've made my decision. I'm going to the control board. Unless they can get an assurance from the English that we've seen the last of body line. And I intend to resign as captain. No, Skipper. The Australian team. You tell those weak bastards the Australian team's resigned. Hey, hey, Vic. Oh, come on, Bill, you're making a mountain out of a mole. But you gentlemen were there. You must have been as disgusted as I was at the violence. Closest thing to a riot I've ever seen. I didn't mean in the stands, I meant on the pitch. Oh, yes, sir. Certainly Jardine went too far. The point is, what are you going to do about it? In view of the fact we're down 2-1, it's a difficult situation. Now, we don't want to be accused of squealing. Look, in my understanding of it, there's nothing in the rules to stop you giving it back to the bastards. That's not the solution, Aubrey. Now, what we propose is a meeting with Pelham Warner make it very clear to him the damage that's being done to cricket itself. And you know how strongly Plum feels about tradition. We are sure Plum will bring pressure to bear. It seems the best course. Don't you agree? It's a start. Will you tell the boys that we have it in hand? Hmm? Let's keep this to ourselves, shall we? I think the time for that's past, don't you? A little more reasonable than I imagined. Don't underestimate him. It worries me that he won't retaliate. I think we're dealing with a man of principle, and in my opinion, they are very stubborn men. We've done everything we can. I mean, no one can hold us responsible for the English team. It's up to them, huh? Telegram? Mm. Mr. Warner? Mr. Warner? Hey, is that a telegram from Mr. Warner? Mr. Warner, Mr. Warner. Thank you very much. I have no intention of contributing to your scurrilous stories. Oh, you mean yesterday's piece? Well, anyway, I'm here about today's. I'm wondering what you're going to say to the Board of Control. You are going to the meeting. What meeting? 
a meeting the board have asked Mr. Warner to attend. A double Irish whiskey, thanks, Snow. No ice and a glass of water. I haven't been asked to attend any meeting. Haven't you received a telegram? Yeah. Hmm. This must be it, then. No comment. It's a terrible thing. Mr. Jardine has driven us all into a corner. Our own captain says it can't go on. I feel very deeply for the Australian team, if that's any consolation. What we need, Plum, is an assurance that Douglas will moderate his tactics. I wish it were otherwise, but that just isn't possible. All we want is a return to more conventional play. My dear fellow, I couldn't agree with you more, but the MCC captain has always dictated tactics. Surely the team manager has a great influence. In normal circumstances, yes. Bloody Jardine. Aubrey, please. All I can say is... I'll speak to you. Thank you, Plum. Let me assure you, on behalf of us all, that none of this reflects on you. If you don't mind a word of advice from an old hand, I'd be looking at other avenues. The board have simply asked me for a reassurance that you modify your tactics. You have no right to discuss our tactics with the Australians. There's no need to raise your voice with me. I'm just reporting what they want. Well, you seem to be prosecuting it with unusual vigour. My dear chap, I have made my position perfectly clear. I've tried to counsel you, I've asked you, and you've just thrown it back in my face. No surprise to me that the Australians want it stopped. And I must say I agree with them. Whatever your personal feelings, you are the MCC manager. Need I explain to you where your loyalty lies? How dare you? My loyalty's not in doubt. So that must settle it. What do you mean? Well, since your loyalty is not in doubt, then you can go to the board on behalf of us all. Tell them that the MCC will use whatever tactics are best suited to winning the Ashes. Douglas, sir. Thank you, Plum. If you don't mind me asking, is there any suggestion you can make, uh, confidentially? My dear chap, I think you should do what your conscience dictates. If you wish to pursue the matter, you'll have to take it higher up. Warner recommends we take it to the Lords. That's a bloody stupid idea. The last thing we want is an official brawl. Knows where that it ends. Maybe so, but Woodfull's not going to Woodfull be satisfied. Woodfull does. He will demand that we do something. The players don't run Australian cricket. The board does. Oh, nevertheless, we must keep faith with the team. We're obliged to take it as far as we can. Look, we have a business to protect. We can't jeopardise the series. We'd be thousands of pounds in the hole. And you know where that'd leave Australian cricket? Down the dummy. Nobody's jeopardising the series. But I suggest we draft a cable to the Lords. Oh. Saying what? Your captain's a cheat. I can see them accepting that. They'd have to support just, Jardine. Just a minute, just a minute. We'll draft a cable, a very strong cable. Alan. Hear me out. And we'll show it to Woodfall. Get him to agree to the wording. Change it if he likes. And we'll ask him to sign it. Sign? Alan, that's brilliant. A protest goes to Lords, but it's unofficial. Talk about having your cake and eating it too. But let's push it, let's push it. Not just Wood. Come on, Bill. Get Bradman to sign it as well, on behalf of the entire team. Bold a bouncer. Hit a boundary. As we suspected, not much luck with Warner. But don't worry, we've got a new strategy. Plum himself suggested we go above his head. Did he? As good as. So, we've drafted a cable to the MCC Lords. Read it. See what you think. That's good stuff. Unsportsmanlike. You think that's a bit strong? No, no, it's hit the nail right on the head. I like the point about relations between the two countries. It's important to stress that it's gone beyond cricket. Anything you think we've missed? What about something concerning the danger to players? Ah, uh, yes. Well, um, how's about uh, 
causing intensely bitter feeling between the players as well as injury. Hmm? Don? Fine by me. Anything else? So you'd be happy to sign that? I should have known. Nobody grows a backbone overnight. That's insulting. That makes a 15 all. I warned you months ago about this and you chose to ignore it. Now you want us to fight your battles. No, you can forget that. If you don't back the team now, you won't have a team. Are you threatening the board? No, I'm telling you that I'm prepared to resign as captain. And the rest of the team will follow. Oh, I see. We've been caucusing, have we? Call it what you like, but cricket in Australia will have three chiefs, no bloody Indians. We'll have to consider this. No. Outside, there are a group of reporters. Either you go out, read that cable as your response, or I go out and tell them that we've been sold down the river. It's your choice. The board will not be dictated to. I think we all know who'll get the support of the Australian people. Our names are not going on that cable. Yeah, hold on, Aubrey. Obviously, Bill and Don feel very strongly about this. Oh, bugger that! We're not putting the tour at risk. There'd be an uproar if we accused them of being unsportsmanlike. We're not sending that as it stands. There'll be an even bigger uproar if the team resigns. The players haven't given us much choice. You've got a quorum. Put it to the vote. Thank you for the suggestion. As chairman, I say we deal with it. We send it. I agree. Send it. Aubrey? I want it recorded in the minutes. I strongly object to the sending of that cable. Body line bowling has assumed such proportions as to menace the best interests of the game. Hallelujah, we're saved, brothers. Making protection of the body by the batsman the main consideration. This is causing intensely bitter feeling between the players as well as injury. In our opinion, it is... ...as well as injury. In our opinion, it is unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike? In our opinion, unless stopped at once, it is likely to upset the friendly relations existing between Australia and England, signed Australian Border Control. Well, you can see I wasn't overstating it when I said it was something of a crisis. Fire straight back. Tell them we deplore their cable. Let's raise the stakes. They're talking about friendly relations between the two countries. Well, if it's that bad, why not suggest cancelling the tour? Ah, that is Kai Boshu. They've always got their noses in the ledger. Huh? You don't agree? Oh, no, no, I agree. That's, that's fine for the cable, but I was thinking we might open up a second front. Thought we might enlist the help of the palace. Well, after all, as we've said, it does affect relations between the two nations. Hmm? His Majesty's private secretary, Sir Clive Wigram, is a good friend of cricket. Oh, you're quite right. It's gone beyond a game. I don't know if you've heard, but uh, there's talk out there of them boycotting English goods. Surely not. It is, and the wharf labourers are refusing to unload British ships. <laughs> a bit hysterical, if you ask me, but then I've never understood the mob. I thought you'd be interested, Sir Clive. Uh, we've drafted a reply to their cable, objecting to the word unsportsmanlike. I should say, sir. We've offered to cancel the rest of the tour. Call it off. Strong as that, eh? Only if they think it's necessary. I'm sure they won't. Well, naturally, it's not what we want. Well, I'm pleased to hear that. Well, what are you looking for? We want the Australians to back down completely. I was hoping, um... Would it be possible for one of our people to approach the Australian government, uh, make it clear to them how serious it would be at a government level if the cricketing ties between our two countries were severed? Flex a muscle, eh? <laughs> well, we can speak to Ernest Crutchley, head of the British mission. Excellent. If you do that, we'll send the cable. 
Good afternoon, Ernest. Prime Minister, good of you to see me at short notice. My pleasure. After all, there are not many places where an Englishman would be welcome these days. <laughs> Sit down, Ernest. I take it, sir, you've seen the Australian board's cable to the MCC. Yes, I've just received a copy of the MCC's reply. It seems the entire tour is now under threat. As I understand it, the suggestion to cancel the tour comes from the MCC. Uh, quite right, Prime Minister, but of course only in response to a fairly uh, belligerent initiative from the Australian board. I'm not sure I'd describe unsportsmanlike as belligerent. Most Australians would call it accurate. I understand your position, sir. Uh, but the MCC has said any decision to cancel rests with the home side. In their cable, they say they would consent only with great reluctance. Certainly be a great shame after all these years of healthy rivalry and wonderful cricket. Exactly the sentiments of His Majesty's government. As I see it, the problem is this. Given that the MCC has uh, thrown the ball back into the Australian court, the board may feel obliged to respond by abandoning the series. What's wrong with the MCC withdrawing its cable? Oh, I don't think that's possible. Not without the board also withdrawing theirs. Sounds a wonderful idea. We could start from scratch. There is another proposal. Cancelling the series would obviously affect relations between Australia and England. In such circumstances, the Prime Minister could prevail upon the board to ensure that the tour continues. I could. It's true. In return, I could also ask His Majesty's government to see if Mr. Jardine won't temper his approach. Why, I'd be happy to. I'll do whatever I can. We have fullest confidence in captain, team, and manager. We have no evidence that our confidence has been misplaced. We hope the situation is not now as serious as your cable would seem to indicate, but if you consider it desirable to cancel remainder of program, we would consent, but with great reluctance. Now to bloody control. I said it. Approach to the Lord, and it would end in a brawl. Aubrey, there's no mileage in that. We're in it now. We've got to deal with it. No choice. We've got to back down. The tour must go ahead. The tour's never been cancelled. Not in the history of cricket. I'm not convinced we should rush in. We have commitments, contractual commitments. Two-thirds of our income's from test cricket. It'd be pretty humiliating for them if their team was sent packing. It could be a try-on. We might make a conciliatory gesture, but keep the future oh. of the tour open. Jesus, mate. They might meet us halfway, get Jardine to make some concession. Alan, you're pissing in the wind. Leave this table. We have the fullest confidence in captain, team, and manager. We are convinced they would do nothing to infringe either the laws of cricket or the school. Phone call, Dr. Robertson. I said no interruptions. It's the Prime Minister, sir. Robertson, Prime Minister? Ah, Alan. Sorry to worry you. I'm sure you've got enough on your plate. Not at all, sir. No doubt you know why I'm calling. I've just seen the MCC's cable. Uh, we were just considering it now. I know you're in a difficult position, but the government believes that any cancellation of the tour could have serious consequences. I understand, Prime Minister. There are larger issues at stake. For a start, the relationship between Australia and the mother country. Certainly, sir. The board wouldn't wish to do anything that might embarrass the government. Good. If it's any help, I've asked His Majesty's government to see if they can influence Mr. Jardine. Thank you, sir. Very decent of you. Not at all. Let's hope it has some effect. We'll leave with that, then, shall we? Yes, Prime Minister. Thank you. Goodbye. That's it, then. I'll draft a reply. Tell them we don't consider it necessary to cancel. Yes, I do. <coughs> Douglas, a word, please. Plum, yes, go ahead. In private, if you would. Well, I'm sure Gubby and Bob will keep a confidence. Very well. I warn you, you might find it embarrassing. Please, sit down. 
I have just had a call from Ernest Crutchley, head of the British mission. Yes. He tells me the Australians are going to back down. The series will be resumed. Now, Wonderful. Well done. And he has asked that you temper your approach. Oh, has he now? And is Mr. Crutchley conversant with the laws of cricket? My dear fellow, he is a representative of His Majesty's government. You can't dismiss him as easily as you do me. And this is an official approach on behalf of the government? Not exactly. It's the result of discussions with the Australian Prime Minister. Ah, so he has approached you at the behest of the Australians. How can you say that? How can you be so ignorant? The man is concerned with international relations, with, with the image of our country abroad. How can you be so gullible? The Australians are trying everything. They were so certain of victory, now faced with defeat, they cry foul. For the last time, you are being asked to stop. And for the last time, no. In that case, I order you. On whose authority? Mr. Warner won't be joining us. One day, I trust you will see the tragedy of this. Everything that our country cherishes is being destroyed. Honor, duty, cricket itself. Well, whatever happens, old boy, it's on your head. I wash my hands a bit. I'm sorry, I've lost my appetite. Oh, good Lord. We, the Australian Board of Control, appreciate your difficulty in dealing with the matter raised in our cable without having seen the actual play. We unanimously regard bodyline bowling as adopted in some games of the present tour as being opposed to the spirit of cricket and unnecessarily dangerous to players. We are deeply concerned that the ideals of the game shall be protected and therefore appoint a subcommittee to report on action necessary to eliminate such bowling from all cricket in Australia from the beginning of next season. We'll forward copy of committee's recommendation for your consideration and hope for cooperation in application to all cricket. We do not consider it necessary to cancel remainder of the program. They haven't withdrawn on sportsmen, like. Uh, not explicitly, but uh, I think the whole text of the cable is conciliatory. They've learned their lesson. I'm quite satisfied. Yes, I agree. Let's say we leave the matter there and get on with the game. Hmm. Have you seen this? text of the Australian cable. They say, we regard bodyline bowling as being opposed to the spirit of cricket and unnecessarily dangerous to players. Well. And they haven't even withdrawn the word unsportsmanlike. Yes, I know. Well, what are you going to do about it? I've told you, old boy, I wash my hands of it. While that word remains on the record, this tour cannot continue. I refuse to listen. Well, perhaps you'll listen to the team. Go in. <coughs> Painter? I want to see the team in the bar immediately. You all right? Hmm? <coughs> I'm sorry to interrupt. I'd like to see you two in the bar. Yes, sir. Aye, ah, right, Skipper. It's bloody perfect timing as mm. usual. Excuse us.
Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong room. I apologize for the hour, but we have reached a point where decisions have to be made. It's not necessary for me to detail the bitterness that our tactics have caused both on and off the field. Mr. Warner and I hold sharply opposing views, and earlier this evening this led to harsh words. I would like to make it clear that I take full responsibility for the use of leg theory. It is the captain's prerogative to determine tactics. But I believe that the situation now demands that the team should have their say. For my part, I am sure the tour would be a happier one if we abandoned this approach. But I don't believe that we could win the Ashes. If the team support the use of leg theory, there remains one obstacle. The word unsportsmanlike. I have learned that this accusation, leveled against us all, remains on the record. I do not intend to continue the series unless it is retracted. It is a slur on our honor, our prestige, and our country. Others may not think this, and if this is the case, then I shall stand down as captain and withdraw from the team. I shall leave the room if you wish. I'm a much better bowler than I am speaker. By my reckoning, we all skip her a debt. You see, uh, Selectors said I were too old. But now I'm bowling faster than ever. And people said Bradman couldn't be stopped, but Bill bowled him out for a duck. And when we left, we were like a team going to slaughter. And now we got them on the run. And it was Skipper that showed us how. Now we haven't come 12,000 miles to lose. I want to keep playing tests. And I want to keep bowling leg theory. So I want to win. Speak up. Does anyone feel differently? As vice captain, I'm sure I speak for the team. Douglas, you have our full support. Aye. 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 Plum, perhaps you could use your good offices. Point out to the Australian board how we feel as a team. Get them to withdraw the word. You, you know I'd do anything for the team. Plum, if they don't withdraw the word, tell them that none of us will be on that train tomorrow. Ah, yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night, Douglas. Good night, Plum. Good night, Skipper. Good night, Skipper. Good night, Skipper.